Alright, what's going on you guys? So this is going to be the Dave Palumbo video uh, 2.0 um, discussing Palumboism. I want to apologize in advance for the audio quality. Um, I do not have a high-tech mic right now. and uh, This is my first time attempting this uh, screen capture type of video. Um, so let's start with this first picture here. So Dave Palumbo, um, what we're going to be discussing first is where the term Palumboism came from. Obviously, Dave Palumbo. Uh, a little background on Dave Palumbo. I believe he was a national level NPC competitor. Um, I don't think he ever turned pro, to my knowledge. Um, he's the owner of Species Nutrition and also uh, the website RX Muscle. Um, as you can see, he was a big, uh, big guy. He had a lot of mass, a lot of size, a lot of vascularity. He was not a bad looking bodybuilder in his heyday. I mean, these are pictures from him in his prime, kind of before Palumboism struck. Um, I've, I've seen videos and uh, some statistics that said he, he would grow to over 300 pounds in the offseason. So what we're talking about with bodybuilders who have Palumboism is bodybuilders who uh, reach excessive sizes in the offseason. We're probably talking about weights of uh, 280 pounds and up. So he's looking good. He's looking great. Then this happens. This is a real picture. This is not uh, photoshopped in any way. I believe this was around uh, early 2000s, maybe 2003. I believe he was in his prime uh, in the late 90s. So this was towards the end of his uh, amateur bodybuilding career. As you can see, uh, the gut is just extremely distorted. The arms, uh, you can see the triceps are starting to shrink a little bit. Um, you can see what, what tends to happen with this palumboism is the, uh, the extremities, the legs, the arms tend to look smaller, and the torso just tends to be the focal point. It tends to be the biggest area. And we're going to be discussing some of the things that may uh, be contributing uh, factors to this condition. We have another one. As you can, yeah, you can see his gut's looking pretty bad right there. All right, so that's it for Mr. Palumbo. So let's go back. We're going to be talking about other bodybuilders that have this Palumboism. Um, did I make a folder for Kai Green? No. And we're going to be discussing this because I can show you better than I can tell you. I had a video before where I was just talking about it. I mean, some people said they couldn't see it on Kai Green. They didn't see this Palumboism on Kai Green or Jay Cutler. So, Jay Cutler, um, it's kind of up in the air on whether or not he's developing Palumboism. Jay Cutler was always a blocky bodybuilder. Um, there was many competitions where he had trouble with his waist. Um, in recent times, we've seen that his arms are starting to get a little bit smaller. His legs still look pretty impressive from, from some of the shots that he's shown. But um, it's pretty obvious that he's uh, kind of uh, taking some time off of bodybuilding and maybe uh, taking some time off a lot of the drugs. Um, I don't think he's going to be competing anytime soon. We, all, we can all see that he's looking a lot smaller. I haven't seen him with his shirt off recently, so I have no idea what he's looking like. But here you can see the gut. Um, it's getting pretty bad. Um, the arms are still looking decent. The legs are still looking decent. Not a severe case of palumboism, but possibly a potential future case of palumboism. The palumboism tends to happen as they get older and towards the end of their careers. Um, let's see who we got on that. Ah, oh, Ronnie Coleman. I mean, look at Ronnie. He looks like a spitting image of that picture of Dave Palumbo we had. Um, now, granted, he is retired, um, and he's probably not working out or juicing as hard as he used to. But look, the arms looking smaller and the gut is the focal point of the picture um, the gut is the most uh, protruding thing the most obvious thing arms are starting to shrink legs are starting to get shitty um, let's go back and look at that picture of Dave Palumbo now that looks pretty similar to that picture we just looked at of Ronnie starting to look pretty bad who we got next oh this Dexter doesn't belong in there I don't so Kai Green, if we're talking about the gut, you can you can see it protruding here. Um, we're not really so much talking about the legs uh, starting to shrink, not so much um, talking about the arms. This is an older picture of Kai Green, but this is just an example of the gut that we're talking about that could uh, be a result of this palumboism. So here, uh, Kai Green is starting to look a little, uh, little bit like Dave Palumbo. Again, let's look at that picture of Dave Palumbo. Are we seeing some similarities between him and Kai Green? Let's pull up this picture of Kai. Shrink that bitch. 
Look at the gut, guys. He's got the gut going on. It's in the starting phases of Palumboism. I'm not saying Kai is full, full blown Palumboism yet, uh, but I'm saying it's starting to, to develop. Look, his arms are still pretty impressive, but the focal point of the picture is starting to become this gut. This gut is becoming, it's just becoming huge. You can't tell me that's not a huge gut. Um, so he's starting to look somewhat like that. Not nearly as bad as Palumbo. I'm not saying that. Um, Let's pull up that picture of Ronnie and put it next to Palumbo. Come on, guys. That's, I mean, Ronnie might have it a little bit worse in this picture. His arms look a little worse. I'm not sure if Dave Palumbo was, like, guest posing in this or if this was an actual competition, but he looks fucking freaky in that midsection. So let's go back. Um, who else do we got? Kai. Another picture of Kai again. The gut is becoming a focal point. For comparison, again, let's pull up Mr. Palumbo. I mean, it, it's pretty obvious in this picture. The gut's starting to protrude pretty bad. The arms are even looking smaller there. Granted, they're not flexed. I mean, come on, guys. There's a clear comparison. For those of you guys that are saying there's no way Kai Green has it, Kai Green doesn't even look close to having Palumboism. Again, I'm not saying he's got full blown Palumboism. But come on, guys. It's starting to happen. You can see it. He's in the beginning phases. Um, let's look at some other guys. What was this guy's name, man? I'm, I'm totally blanking on this. Greg Kovacs. Um, this was another huge bodybuilder. And again, we're talking about huge bodybuilders. Kai Green, another bodybuilder I forgot to mention. He's been known to get over 300 pounds in the offseason. And this year at the Mr. Olympia, he claimed to weigh 40 pounds more than Phil Heath, which would put him at 280 pounds. So again, we're talking about the bodybuilders that put on a lot of mass and are probably using a lot of drugs to achieve this mass. Um, so we're looking at Greg Kovacs, obviously a terrible midsection. This guy, I don't think he ever turned pro either. Um, this guy was like a super heavyweight NPC uh, national, level, national level competitor. I believe he was 300 plus on stage. And the off-season weight was something ridiculous. I want to say 400 pounds, but I don't want to sound stupid. Um, you guys can look that up on your own. Again, his name is Greg Kovacs. Um, I believe he either died recently or had a heart attack recently. And he's no longer competing. Um, and again, that was towards the end of his career. In the beginning phases, he actually looked pretty good. I don't have any pictures from that, though. I, I think there's just videos. Marcus Rule. Again, we're talking about a mass monster. Look at that gut, guys. And again, we're talking about a GH gut, so that's that's what we're going to be talking about a little bit is GH and, and how this might be causing it. Um, in my previous video about Palumboism, I got a whole lot of comments with a whole lot of theories. Nobody knows for sure what causes Palumboism. It's not a real disease. It's just a, it's just a term that uh, fans of bodybuilding and people in the industry have given this, this look. Um, and there's a lot of speculation as to what causes it, and I'm going to talk about a little bit of that uh, here shortly. So again, Marcus Rule, you can see the gut, but again, he's a mass monster. Look at the peaks on those biceps. Look at the thickness of his chest. His fucking tr look at the traps, man. His traps are insane. This, I mean, dude, he was he was a good looking guy, man. It's so again, the point is these guys didn't start out with his Palumbos, and they all looked great at some point. I mean, Marcus Rule is one of my favorite bodybuilders. There was this video of him back when I uh, first was getting serious into training. And he was doing a bicep workout, and, and the peaks on his biceps looked so freaky. And that was just one of my favorite, you know, motivational videos that I would watch before training. His biceps are just fucking insane. The peaks on those things, man. Uh, now this photo, I believe, uh, I believe this is Photoshop, but the, the real picture still looks pretty ridiculous. I couldn't find it. This is probably Photoshopped. Um, again. I mean, look at the peak on that bicep. This guy was a monster. Don't know what's going on with the shoulder here. He's got some weird, you know, things on his body. I don't know, man. Again, with the gut. Ah, Paul Dillette. So here's Paul Dillette when he was young. Uh, another thing that these guys are speculating on is... Um, these guys didn't start taking growth hormone until later on in their careers. That's why in the beginning, they had these tight abs. They had these smaller waists. If you've seen uh, videos, I might have a picture. Let me see. Uh, probably not. I thought I had a picture of Kai when he first started, when he was a teenager. 
Um, and his waist was not looking bad at all. He was looking shredded. His waist was small. And the speculation is that that was before he took growth hormone. So let's see what we got here. If we have the later picture of Paul DeLette. So here's Paul DeLette, uh, here's Paul DeLette later on in his career. As you can see, he's got some freaky shit going on with his gut. Um, let's see if we can zoom in on that. That looks horrible. All right, so we just passed the picture of Jay Cutler. Palumboism starting to look a little more evident in this photo. I'm not sure when this photo was taken. It's obviously off season. I'm not going to say he's in competition form because he's obviously not. Um, there we go. So are we starting to see some similarities here? I mean, this is obviously something that all these bodybuilders have in common. First of all, they're all bodybuilders. They're all mass monster bodybuilders. They all have the gut. Uh, I'm not going to say all of their extremities are shrinking because that seems to be mostly a thing with Dave Palumbo. Um, and these guys, in the early phases, their arms are still looking good but not looking as good. Um, so let's, let's go back through Marcus Rule. Did we do a comparison photo with him? The gut. It's got that turtle shell looking gut. They've all got the same thing going on. Um, so let's, let's pull up this picture of Dave when I... All right. So the speculation that I've been seeing on my last video, the causes of this gut. One person said his theory was it had nothing to do with the drugs at all. Now, I'm not sure if I agree with this, but he was talking about how these guys that, that grow to this size, the amount, of, the, the amount of food that they force feed themselves on a daily basis, his theory was that that, that somehow stretched out their stomach and that caused this abnormal looking stomach because these guys had to, had to eat so much food in a day that they were practically force feeding themselves and their stomachs were just not built to handle that amount of food um, and it just put a strain and a pressure on, on their midsection that was not that the human body was not supposed to be withholding these guys were just eating so much food and the human body wasn't wasn't built to eat that much food and that was the theory that this guy had now the popular theory is growth hormone as many people know growth hormone will grow more than just your muscles um, it's gonna it's gonna make your organs grow faster. Um, I've heard doctors say that if you have cancer in your body, um, and you're taking growth hormone, then that's gonna accelerate the growth of the cancer cells. This is gonna accelerate the growth of all kinds of cells in your body. So the popular theory behind growth hormone is your intestines. Um, it's making your intestines grow, and as your uh, as your body's getting smaller and as you're getting less muscular, your intestines aren't going to shrink. So e even if you're still taking growth hormone and you're you're getting older, you're not pu you're not holding the muscle mass that you used to hold. Um, so your muscles are all shrinking, um, but your gut's going to stay the same size because your your intestines aren't going to start shrinking just because your muscles are still shrinking. So your intestines are going to they're going to stay the same size they were when you were a 300 pound mass monster. And even when you shrink down to 250, they're still going to be the same as they were. So your gut's going to look huge. So as the muscularity of the, as the muscularity of these guys decreases as they age, um, the organ growth that they endured through taking all that growth hormone um, causes their guts to stay big. Um, I've heard theories about the insulin, but I'm, I'm not going to claim to be an expert on insulin. On insulin, I'm not a steroid expert, so I don't know about all that stuff. Um, so those are just some of the popular theories that I've heard. I wanted to show you guys evidence. Um, in comparisons to show you guys why I said I think Kai Green is developing Palumboism and why I think uh, Palumboism is a trend with these mass monster bodybuilders. So, like I said, I can show you guys better than I can tell you. So these are these are my examples. All these guys are mass monsters. All these guys were 280 plus off season and competition season, um, and all these guys started to develop signs of Palumboism. Um, I guess only time will tell what happens to Kai Green and Jay Cutler. But looking at Ronnie Coleman, one of the one of the biggest freakiest guys there ever was on stage. Um, don't quote me on this, but I want to say at one point he was on stage with shredded glutes at 280 pounds. I don't know what year Olympia it was, um, but he was a mass monster, guys. And look at that. I mean, like I said, he's not in competition form or anything, but the gut. I mean, look at it protruding from the sides, too. I mean, you can see his waist come in down here, and the gut just protrudes from the sides, from the front. The arms are small. The legs are small. Um, I mean, I don't know why I have a picture of Dexter Jackson on here, to be honest with you guys. I believe this picture was from the Dubai Pro. It was probably from another video I made. 
Dexter Jackson, I'm not going to accuse of having Palumboism because he looks great. But again, guys, that freaky monster gut that Kai Green's starting to develop. Um, I mean, especially evident from the side view. You're not going to see a whole lot of pictures of Kai from the side view like this because he's often hitting a side tricep, which he reaches his uh, his other arm across to cover the gut, or he's hitting a side chest where he's covering his gut with his bicep. Um, and most of the side shots that Kai Green hits, he tries to cover or shrink his gut as much as possible. So you're never going to see a relaxed side uh, view like this because he tries to hide it. So that's it for this video, guys. It's getting kind of long. I'm going to go ahead and end it now. Thank you guys for watching. Um, let me know what you guys think about Palumboism um, in the comment section below. Thank you, guys.